I'm a little worried about this question because I think some of you are going to get confused by the story and not really know what you're dealing with, and it just feels like there's a lot of potential traps. So what I see right away is that this is going to be a linear equation, y equals mx plus b. I know that because it's a fairly simple story, there's a variable, but then there's a rate, and so that kind of lends itself to a line. Plus, I mean, look at the answer choices. They're a little jumbled, but they basically follow that idea that there's kind of like a variable and, and something multiplied by it, there's something else added on, it equals some simple thing. So it, it, a lot of things are pointing towards y equals mx plus b, so that might be where you want to start. The variable p is going to behave like our x. That's our unknown. That's going to be embedded in the question, so that's a perfect match for our x. Well, what do we do with this p? The p is the monthly payments, the number of monthly payments, so the number of months, and each month we're going to pay $16. So that is working like a slope. It's a rate, and so when we have a line, that's going to appear in the slope. So that's the m is the 16. The B is the y-intercept, and that tends to look like a starting point. And so in this particular story, the $37 down payment, we can't avoid that. No matter how many months we um, distribute this uh, uh, microscope over, we need to pay the 37 up front. So that's going to be just a plus 37 that we can't avoid. And this is equal to the total cost, which they just tell us is 165. So we can substitute that in. However, in other versions of this question, that might kind of still look like a variable, and that's okay. Now, we don't need to solve for P. That's not our instruction. They did kind of mess things up a little bit by putting the 165 at the end, but hopefully we can see 16P plus 37 is one of our choices. So choice C is the answer. I think that that is the best way to get this. I think it is um, easier, faster. I also think that even beyond this question, you should try to understand where linear equations come from and the kinds of stories that are going to become linear equations, lines. Um, if you were confused, you do have the option to kind of solve for P and then test your answer out. So you might be able to understand this as like, okay, I know I have $165 and I'm going to pay the 37 so what does that come out to, right? Let's use the calculator. 165 minus 37, that's $128. Then I have to say, all right, 16 goes into that how many times, right? I need to, number, know, I need to know how many monthly payments I'm gonna make. So 128 divided by 16 gives me eight, which is the value P. Now if I plug that into these answer choices, I'm gonna see that it doesn't really work in all these cases, so choice A, 16 times 8 minus 37, it's supposed to be 165, but it is instead 91, right? So that's the, the wrong value. And I'm not going to go through all of them, but just to, to kind of compare 16p plus 37, 16 times 8 is 128, plus 37 is 165, so that checks out. Um, if that helps you, feel free to go that way. Right? I mean, for many of you who struggle with math, the problem is algebra. Algebra is confusing. It is prone to mistakes. Arithmetic is a little bit easier. You can do things one step at a time. You can use the calculator. So arithmetic is a little bit safer. And so if there are ever opportunities to use arithmetic instead of algebra, take those opportunities. I'd rather you spend more time and get the question right. We get points for more right answers. So... Take the time to avoid a careless mistake if that's what it's going to take for something like this.